Adam from iClimate guys, and today's video is what are the different types of air conditioning units, their uses, application, and what they basically look like. Being an installation company, people ask us all the time, what are the different units, what are my options, and how do I know it's the best fit for me? So today, we're gonna to give you a small breakdown of the range, the applications, so you can see a bit more about how to air condition your property. The first type of unit next to me is a high wall unit here. This is the most readily available and the most installed type of system you can put in your house or your commercial property. The unit here is the inside unit, which is what we're looking at here, the rectangular box. This is inside the room. It has a discharge louver flap here where the air outlets from, and it takes return air from the top of the unit through the filters above here. These units are normally sited at high level on a wall between a corner of a ceiling and a wall space. Moving downwards here, this is the most important bit we get asked about. This is the outside condensing unit. So this is an air-cooled version. As you can see, there's a fan on it. This must sit on the outside of your property. Between this and the indoor unit, there are a set of pipes and a interconnection cable, which helps them communicate and removes the refrigerant across the system to make sure that it obviously works correctly. The unit also comes with a wireless infrared remote controller. It allows full functionality, switching between the modes of heating, cooling, fan, dehumidification, and obviously you have your whole range of temperature within each mode to make sure you can set it up according to your needs. These units are typically suited to small or medium-sized bedrooms or even small living spaces within a UK home. The indoor unit is very compact. It has a width of 834 millimeters. It has a height of 270 and a depth of 222 millimeters, making this for a very compact high wall unit. The most important question we get asked is how loud is the air conditioner? On the inside, when we go abroad, we might be used to going to tropical places where it's warm and the air conditioning systems might be quite crude and loud to deal with the high ambience and high humidity. But rest assured, in the UK domestic market, air conditioning is whisper quiet. And for bedroom use at night, this unit is ideal. It's only emitting a 20 decibels when on cooling mode, noise emittance when it's on its lowest fan speed setting, which is whisper quiet, essentially air diffusion into your room. It's a very high energy saving unit rated at A double plus and A plus and has a seasonal energy efficient rating of 7.4, as you can see, the noise of the outside unit. The outside unit on this is a inverter driven module, which means that it doesn't just come on and off. It essentially operates like your car engine where the inverter will speed up and speed down according to the load that's required inside. It also has a variable fan on this air-cooled version, which also means that when operation is low or nighttime operation is required, the outdoor condensing unit can be put into a nighttime setback mode, which is a minimal noise emittance for any noise disturbance in built up residential areas. Final question we get asked is, how do I power my air conditioning unit? As you can see, majority of split type air conditioners going up to a four kilowatts can be essentially powered off your 13 amp plug power supply. This can be obviously off a plug, or if you don't wish to use a plug, you can have one of our electricians to come in and use a independent power supply from the fuse board, or also utilizing the ring main running in your house currently, which we can drop down to a fuse spur and then you can safely power your air conditioning system from it. The next type of unit you're looking at, it's still within the high wall mount range, and this is a much larger high wall mount, so this is suited for light commercial premises or very large domestic spaces that want to cool the entire span of a floor from one single unit. This is a 10 kilowatt high wall indoor unit. As you can tell, it's approximately nearly double the width of the smaller compact units. It needs to be essentially for the airflow and the cooling capacity. But this orientation is exactly the same. We have a discharge louver at the bottom with a high level return air going through the filters. And directly underneath it is the associated outdoor condensing unit, much larger unit due to the high capacity, but also DC inverter driven. The next type of unit is what we call a ceiling suspended unit. This is a high capacity, high airflow heating and cooling unit. It's ideally suited to light commercial spaces or small shops on the high street, ideally where the footprint is not so wide, but very narrow. And this unit is well suited because it has a very high air throw discharge that can deal with the length of the commercial space. These units typically come with a wired remote controller, which is sited on a wall, as you can see here, giving you a touch panel functionality between the modes on this 
and obviously the usual air conditioning settings. Sticking to the commercial range, this is the first type of concealed ducted air conditioner, essentially meaning that the unit is not visible. This unit is designed to be installed within suspended ceilings or bulk, bulkheads. Sorry, It has a multi-outlet on the front, which can be connected to grills, high capacity fans, return air from the back, and this can supply conditioned air to a very large footprint of uh, office space, essentially, or a commercial space that doesn't want to see the air conditioner physically on the wall. So this is a concealed ducted unit. The next type of unit is what we call a ceiling cassette type of unit, which is here. It's essentially a square that sits within a suspended ceiling or a bulkhead ceiling. The difference with this is if you don't have the space within your ceiling configuration to run ductwork through to hide the air conditioner and the outlet. The dimensions of this indoor unit is approximately one meter by one meter, and you will need a ceiling height of 250 millimeters to suspend this up into your ceiling. This is ideal if you don't have space within the bulkhead and too many obstacles and you wish to supply your office or commercial space with uh, conditioned air at a very even stratified output. This is the unit you need, a ceiling cassette. This unit here is also what we call a ceiling cassette unit, but it's a compact ceiling cassette unit designed for ideally to sit between the standard ceiling tiles that are 600 by 600, and that is the dimensions of the finishing panel of this unit, 600 by 600, with also a height of 200 millimeters. They are a very highly efficient unit, but slightly compact. They won't do the airflow as the larger full-size cassette, but they will uh, provide you with heating and cooling for the given size very efficiently. So far, we've been talking about air conditioning on a one-to-one -one basis, a split arrangement, which means one inside unit and the associated outdoor unit. The question I get asked a lot is, can I have all my air conditioning requirements done from one central outdoor unit, especially in residential properties in London? And what's next to me is this exact unit. It's the multi-type of AC condenser. It comes in a configuration of two, three, four, and five. So we can feed a minimum of two units and all the way up to five units of different type of indoor variants from one central outdoor unit, ideal for retrofit residential properties. As you can see here, we can have a different arrangement of indoor units. So you can have a compact ceiling cassette and also a small compact wall unit fed with the pipework back to the condenser. One key thing to note on multi installations is there'll be a set of pipes and interconnecting services between the condenser and every indoor unit in your property. The key thing to remember about the multi-system arrangement is every indoor unit will need its associated pipework and interconnecting cabling running directly back to the multi-condensing unit you can see here. So we have two sets of pipework here, one feeding the wall, one feeding the compact with the associated interconnecting cables running all the way from the outdoor to the indoor. So in your house and property, we'll need to plan the pipework. So whatever the multi-condenser is, we can aesthetically install it so it suits the outside while also minimal disruption inside. Don't wish to see the air conditioning unit, not happy with a wall unit or a floor unit and you want to have concealed air conditioning retrofitted, which is one of our largest inquiries we get at iClimate. This is the unit that you need. I choose this unit because it's ideal to be installed within uh, existing wardrobes. This unit has a depth of 500, a height of 200 and a width of 750. It has a very shallow depth, so it will fit within a standard 600 depth wardrobe. It has a discharge at the front, which we can configure to a grill. Air is taken from the back. Perfect solution for a concealed, uh, retrofitted air conditioning into your bedroom. Sticking with the concealed invisible air conditioning theme, the unit here now is a floor ducted unit and it's designed to sit within a stud wall or a bulkhead wall that's been bought out or a bookcase or custom joinery where this can be bolted onto the back wall. The air discharge for this is vertical at up and the return air is taken from a configuration of under here or this panel can be removed and adjusted so the return air can come back into the unit at this point. The footprint of this unit is quite compact. It is approximately 600 high, 700 wide and 150 millimeters deep. It is ideal for a concealed installation and air discharge running at high level into the room if you don't have any ceiling space.
Right, finishing off with the concealed air conditioning, if you have a look up here, this is a slim ducted AC unit. It's different from the one that I showed you that is applicable to the wardrobes. That is a smaller compact unit. This is a typical ducted unit designed to go within the ceiling. It has an automated grill on the front of this unit, which is very cool. So essentially, when it's closed, the grill louvers will be flat. When it's in operation, you can adjust the louvers and provide the level of air discharge you wanna push into the room. It's essentially giving you the functionality of a wall unit with the adjustable louver, but through a concealed ducted um, configuration. And then if you have a look over here, this is what you typically see when the ceiling bulkhead is built around the unit. The large grill at the bottom is the air going back into the system and that's the discharge at the front. This is a typical uh, high capacity hotel arrangement. The next type of air conditioning system is what we call a VRF. This is essentially one set of pipes being fed from the outside unit into your property and then a loop refrigeration pipe work being fed to all the indoor units. We typically quote and install projects like this that are going through a refurbishment or a build where the property is a carcass and we can place the refrigeration split joints in their correct positions while maintaining a single outdoor unit and a very discreet single set of pipe work that penetrates into the building. So as you can tell, these units are slightly larger in capacity because of their different orientation in the condenser. And there's one set of pipes that exit the condenser. They run up into high level and then they can feed a arrangement of different indoor units. So you can see we've got a ducted, we've got a compact cassette, a wall and a floor ducted coming off one condenser. Not forgetting guys that this is a light commercial system. So if you have a very large domestic property and you wish to have one outdoor unit with one set of pipes and you're going through a refurb, then the VRF can be suited to you. But typically the VRFs are installed in commercial spaces. So you will see these ref nets within commercial building risers or within ceilings serving a large number of indoor units at a very high capacity for cooling and heating. So it could be multiple office floors, hotels, or commercial spaces such as uh, factories and stuff like that. So light commercial or very large domestic is the application for the VRF. Let's talk power supplies. So for a split system and a multi-split system, the power supplies all go to the condensing unit. So you need one point of power from your premises to the outdoor AC condenser. We then bring that power supply back and feed the associated indoor units through our interconnecting cabling. But when it comes to the VRF system, you need two power supplies. So the outdoor condensing unit must be on its own dedicated power supply and the indoor units need to be on their associated dedicated power supplies also. So you need to balance the fact of, do I have one set of pipes on the outside of my property and am I okay to run independent power supplies for each of the indoor units? Like I said before, this light commercial VRF installation is suited for properties that are going through a refurbishment, they're quite large domestic properties, or if they are a commercial space and you're very limited to the outdoor unit you, the landlord or the building management that you put in, then this is the system that you need. So this is a, what we call a low wall unit, a cased low wall unit. So it's a visible unit. It's ideal for loft bedrooms, which don't have a lot of uh, flat vertical wall, wall space because of the roof. Ideal to go above the skirting. It has an air discharge louver at high level here, along with another air discharge louver at low level. The return air is taken from the front face here through the filters, and it's a uh, quite a compact unit. It's 750 millimeters in width, a height of 600 and a depth of 200. So this is what you need if you wish to have a lovely cool sleep in your loft bedroom, this unit. These central heat recovery VRFs, they come in the heat recovery variant and they also come in the heat pump variant. So if you don't wish to have simultaneous heating and cooling across a common system and you just want a typical air conditioning orientation where the system is on a all heat or an all cool setting across the indoor units, then you can also have a large capacity VRF that can serve up to 12 to 15 dedicated indoor units. The only difference between the heat recovery and the heat pump is if you wish to have the heat recovery, you'll have the distributor box in between that will distribute to the fan core units, whereas the heat pump will have two pipes coming into here, and this will do all the distribution across the refrigeration network to the indoor units for that given mode. The heat pump system is essentially a set of pipes that flow and return from the outdoor condensing unit on the split multi-type variants to the associated indoor unit. 
Now the one up from this is if you require heating and cooling simultaneously within the same space from the same condenser. This is only really applicable to hotels where people from different places want different temperatures in their rooms and the footprint of the condensers is limited to where they can place and how many they can place. So what you're next to me here is a Fujitsu air stage inverter. This feeds three pipes from the condenser. These three pipes run into a central distribution box, which is over here. This central distribution box, as you can see the three inlets here, it then has multiple port outlets where it can feed the associated fan core units and send the required state of refrigerant to the correct fan core unit, whether it needs cooling and heating. Now, if the indoor units are on simultaneous modes of heating and cooling, the heat exchange can be done where one unit that's supplying a cooling can then send the uh, sorry, the one unit that's doing the heating can then send its liquid refrigerant back to a unit that needs cooling instead of sending it back to the condenser. So this is where we, essentially the term is uh, covered heat recovery because we're recovering the heat from the unit generated on heating, sending it over into cooling without putting any more load on the outside condensing unit. So these boxes are called a uh, distribution box. Each manufacturer has their own labeling for it. And this is the Fujitsu variant. You can see the control PCBs here and the main branch outlet here. This is for a very high, large capacity VRF system and there's substantially quite a large box here. This can feed up to a number of rooms inside, possibly 16 to 30. Controlling the heat recovery VRF. There's an array of ways you can do this. And typically what we see with hotel applications is the simplified wall controller. It sits on the wall, very easy to use. And the guests can switch between heating and cooling modes. We can also offer a limited functionality if the hotel wish to put a type of seasonal energy efficiency cap on the operation. So that's what you see here. Then you can have a range of uh, touch wall controllers, which are more suited to the high-end rooms or the presidential suites or the uh, private residences within some of the hotels, which give you a bit more functionality than the simplified controller. And the main largest controller here are the two touchscreen options. Touchscreen options are central remote controllers that are essentially installed in a central point within the building. So the hotel would ideally want this within their maintenance office or back of house office, where the technicians and the staff can adjust the units, see the fault codes and uh, adjust rooms according to what the guests need. The last point of control is the BMS integration, right? So when you have a large commercial building and obviously you would have a BMS system, whether it be Trend, Honeywell, um, and integrating the air conditioning is a key part of that. So you can have BMS control from your BMS to control the air conditioning, to set air handlers, dampers, chiller temperatures, VRF operating temperatures, indoor unit statuses in the rooms. And you do this through this integration panel. These are custom built design enclosures from the manufacturer. As you can see, I can see a North Commander here. So I'm assuming it's connected to some type of control four. And this ideally is designed and built on site. And it gives you, uh, opens up an array of functionality through different interface methods that the air conditioning can integrate with the existing building management system. So you can control it efficiently. When we referenced the pipe splits earlier, this is a huge, large scale pipe split in my hand, but essentially the pipe split orientation remains the same. Inlet into here, an outlet to a fan core unit and the existing ring that goes to the other fan core units. This is for the VRF application and this branch needs to be put in specific orientation, but obviously this is a very large branch for a very high capacity, uh, large commercial air conditioning system. And uh, for the residential units, there'll be a much smaller branch. Right guys, that's going to conclude it for now. We've gone through indoor unit variations, system configuration, heat pump, heat recovery, condensing unit sizes suited for your application. Please feel free to get in touch and speak to one of the team and we'll assist you in exactly what you need. And I hope these videos give you a general insight as to the range of air conditioning available in the UK. Thanks for watching.